Hello, hello. Greetings again. Um, okay. I'm going to attempt to do an introduction of, um, oh, hello, big ol' semi. Um, an introduction to... Oh, um, okay, so I was considering doing a series of, uh, kind of review slash analysis of certain video games. Um, I doubt such recordings would ever become very popular, but in the off chance that they do, I wanted to create a video that would introduce some of the more technical ideas before doing so, so that they could be referenced in that video quickly and easily. So that's what I was gonna to attempt to do. Um, all right, so one thing I feel is super important to bring forward into analysis is something that is kind of defiant of analysis, which is hard, which is why it is hard to uh, speak of. Uh, it, is, it is something very alive within our minds, within our psychology, uh, but it is a methodology which has been kind of thrown out by most rigorous analysis because of its association with the religious. Um, it is what some people call the mythopoetic, um, and which I'm going to attempt to describe in as uh, analytical a way, you know, mechanical, scientific, methodological way as I can. Um, uh, to do that, I'll talk about patterns. The fact that we are pattern recognition creatures. Uh, and we know this. We're, that's, that's pretty obvious. We've done all kinds of tests on pattern recognition. Um, what I want to try to point out is just how unique and different that is from the process of analysis. When we anal analyze something, we are generally dividing it. Uh, just like any scientific experiment kind of isolates the thing being uh, studied from the rest of the world. You know, it studies it in a lab situation so that you can reduce the amount of interaction whatever it is has with the rest of the world. Uh, it e even attempts to isolate people to study psychology and that kind of thing, which I would say doesn't always work very well and sometimes is downright disturbing. <laughs> um, so, and, and we kind of screw things up sometimes in our scientific studies because we don't understand the interconnections of things. Which is to say, we don't understand the way organic systemic patterns interact. Because the, the mind that is aiming to divide and is not thinking also of these metaphorical, uh, mythopoetic uh, patterns... Um, will divide too acutely, too deeply, and there will not be uh, the inclusion of all the connections that are necessary to truly understand the system being uh, uh, studied. Uh, so, like, for instance, um, the Portal series by Eric Weinstein, uh, appears to go into this at time at times, and Brett Weinstein, his brother, I think, gets into it with his uh, argument with um, Richard, Richard Dawkins about evolution. Uh, I think, if I understand him correctly, I think. Uh, so what I'm arguing for is that what we sometimes call the mythopoetic. Uh, mythopoetic because it's kind of poetic, it's mythical, and you find it in all religions, you find it in uh, the strange nature of uh, certain fairy tales, uh, at least according to Jung you do, uh, Carl Jung, uh, and I would say it's there, uh, this, this strange organic refinement process that, you know, before stories were copyrighted, they were passed from tongue to tongue, and far from becoming incoherent gibberish, um, what survived in stories was that which people found the most relevant 
which means you have this refinement that is at odds with the scientific mind, which, uh, how do I describe this part? Um, okay, so history attempts to not get caught by the human reaction to a story, but rather attempts to divide off the human reaction from the story, <laughs> ironically, strangely, right? Uh, in order to preserve just the facts, right? The datum, all the little bits and pieces. And so history becomes this dry and dead thing. Uh, it's factual, I suppose, but it's also lifeless, right? It doesn't have anything to do with the motives and intents and biases and desires of the people and how those can be utilized, right? Uh, it becomes this, you know, in 1841, this is what happened. In 1732, this is what happened, blah, 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 blah. Um, and it, it tries to avoid making assumptions about, um, tries not to make assumptions, right? Uh, it tries to create value-free, judgment-free scenarios. And I would argue that that is its own kind of bias, that, that humans are naturally biased machines, meaning, and I'm not just talking about uh, cognitive biases, which are these kind of experimentally verifiable ways in which humans tend uh, to think wrongly about things. They're almost like uh, uh, fallacies, right? Uh, errors in judgment. Um, but I'm talking about when your value structure uh, re results in you interpreting things through the lens of that value, value structure. That is how we survive, right? My value structure is, is that I value food and I value shelter and I value uh, being able to provide those for my family. And so my value structure is exactly what keeps me alive and makes me human. Uh, to unbias me from that is to make me a strange thing indeed. Uh, you know, I suppose you could hook me up to a machine somehow and keep me alive uh, or, or force feed me or something like that. Uh, but but bias is a natural thing. It's the, the key to it is understanding what realms it occupies. Okay, I've really, I've really gone far afield with this, but it's been pr productive. So I'll take, I'll consider this a take one, an attempt one. Uh, so backing up, what is the mythopoetic? What do I mean? What, why did I refer to it as patterns? Okay. The mind is a pattern finding machine, but it doesn't just find the patterns in the moment. Uh, in fact, in some ways, it's not very good at those. That's why we've had to develop science, and that's why people have been come so proud of science. And I would can, I would argue have become. I shouldn't be including this in my video if I'm going to make a video for the game series, but I guess I'm just experimenting here. Um, Science is a kind of fundamentalist ideology, uh, or at least it can be, if it is taken as the only tool for discovering how the world works. Um, there is another, and that is rather than looking at the divided down to the smallest atom view of the world, there is the taking all experiences across time, space, location, uh, person even as your image and the image image meaning something that is very high resolution it doesn't abstract down it, it maintains resolution right um, or at least it can it, it maintains certain types of resolution uh, whereas an abstraction uh, removes resolution in order to get to some principle uh, an image doesn't do that an image uh, a high fidelity image is a pattern, right? A very, 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 very specific pattern. Um, when the mind sees the same things happening over and over again, it develops a pattern of patterns, right? That pattern is what uh, 
Carl Jung called uh, an archetype or an archetypal story, which is how he refers to um, fairy tales as being, as well as uh, myths and legends and religious stories. Um, so I am suggesting not that religion, all religions must be true, or that a religion even is true, although I happen to believe one religion is true. Uh, that's a different story, and I've got other videos to deal with that. Um, you know, again, how it is true is a big part of how, how I'm answering that question. But um, that process, however, has been kind of ejected because it can't be quantified, it can't be divided down because it is the opposite of division. It is accumulation, not of data points, but of these, of these holistic pattern these patterns that exist over time and space uh, that humans accumulate in the form of stories, in the form of, of other things like that. And the reason that is going to be super in, important for any game analysis that I want to do, since I'm, I'm talking about, since I'm doing this for a game analysis series, um, is because, especially in sci-fi games, but in most games, what is very often left out is this mythopoetic structure. Doesn't mean there's a religion in the game, but it does mean that there are mythical patterns in every good game. Uh, or at least they emerge in a single game. Uh, sometimes if there's a long series, however, especially a science fiction series, uh, then the mindset of the historic, the, the, the historic mindset and the scientific mindset, which are kind of history, history, modern history is kind of an attempt to use the scientific method to create a a story of our past, something like that. Uh, I would argue, uh, and when the, that mindset is used to analyze video games uh, and to make them, even I would suggest, uh, then something strange begins to happen. Uh, and I would suggest such games, uh, when they are attempted to be told over long periods of time, uh, become stunted and they, they, they close in and narrow down what the story can actually be instead of allowing this huge, rich, evolving story to happen. And I guess I'm going to leave that on a cliffhanger because to continue to talk about this, number one would be to sit out here in the car while my kids are waiting for me to come inside. But number two would uh, involve me actually going into a description of a video game uh, that I'm thinking of doing a review of. So I will just wait. Thank you very much for joining me here. I appreciate it.